Hello, I'm not sure if this counts as a vlogmas, but uh, I have got a stack, literally a stack of uh, musicals to tell you about. So I am making a video to do it quicker. And in the spirit of vlogmas, I will start with the Christmas ones. So uh, first of all, this is a concentration on mainly off West End musicals that I've seen recently and can happily recommend to you. Uh, first of all, Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, this is at the Bridge House Theatre in Penge. Uh, it is based on the classic film. And when I say classic film, I am not talking about the 1990-something one with Richard Attenborough. I'm talking about the one that I watched as a kid growing up, black and white, on the TV. Uh, and that was a 1947 original with more Maureen O'Hara and Edmund Gwynn, I think it is, uh, as Chris Kringle. It's the story of a uh, Santa Claus uh, hired by Macy's who might just be the real Chris Kringle. Um, and at the Bridge House, it is done, it's a live a musical radio version of this screen classic. Um, this is the second time the Bridge House has done the, one of these um, live radio shows. Uh, it did it a couple years ago, also at Christmas, with uh, my favorite. Um, music uh, no my favorite uh film uh for the festive period of all time my favorite christmas movie and that is it's a wonderful life uh they had a huge hit with that which also toured the country and now they're doing their second radio uh play stroke musical with miracle on 34th street uh, i think it's a great um uh concept and it works really well in this intimate theater uh it's a lot of fun um, and it got me feeling very, very festive indeed. This theatre also has a fantastic Christmas tradition, uh, which is at the curtain call, the audience, uh, along with the cast, uh, sing, we um, wish you a Merry Christmas together, and it's really sweet. Uh, when I was there, it was nearly sold out, so you'll be lucky to get a ticket, so uh, rush to the Bridge House if you can possibly uh, get one. Uh, another uh, Christmas musical, Christmas choice this uh, season, is uh, The Little Match Girl, um, which is on at the Tabard Theatre in Chiswick. Um, now, I haven't seen, actually, bizarrely, I've never seen any screen version of The Little Match Girl, which is uh, strange as there have been so many, but I do recall very well um, the Hans Christian Andersen story about uh, set in the Victorian period which uh, in which The Little Match Girl is forced to go out onto the cold streets of London to sell matches because her father won't let her come home until she's sold out. Uh, and uh, it's a tragic tale, actually. It's really, really sad. <clears throat> but it's done uh, well in this intimate space with a really exciting young star, Emily Cochran, playing the little match girl. This is the 40th anniversary revival at the Tabard. And uh, the theatre has actually lured back uh, Keith Strachan, who was the uh, original composer of this musical version of the Hans Christian Andersen story. Um, now, it too has a Christmas favourite, a British Christmas favourite to sing along to, which is Mistletoe and Wine. Um, you may probably, if you are British, remember the, the uh, Cliff Richard version. He, of course, made that song famous. And indeed, you get another sing-along, uh, the audience with the cast at the end, if you know the words to Mistletoe and Wine, which I didn't, but I enjoyed it nevertheless. Uh, okay, um, existing long beyond Christmas is uh, this um, revival, first major London revival of Andrew Lloyd Webber's, I think it's 2004 musical, uh, The Woman in White, uh, based on another uh, Victorian classic, Wilkie Collins's um, novel, um, uh, something novel of the same name. Uh, I did see this original uh, production of this musical, which was at the Palace Theatre. And the thing that I mainly remember about it was a really lovely performance by Maria Fr Friedman, but also uh, things that stick in the memory are Michael Crawford in a fat suit with a rat running up his arm uh, as Count Fosco, one of the uh, sidekick villains. Um, and also some really incredible um, 3D projection. It was kind of groundbreaking in video projection at the time, so very, very big budget. Um, here, Tom Sutherland uh, has completely stripped that back uh, and uh, for a much smaller scale production, more intimate, um, uh, and in, for me, uh, quite a bit more engaging production at Charing Cross Theatre. Uh, real standout performances, again, uh, the part of Marion Halcom uh, is a standout, and that here is played by uh, Carolyn Maitland, following in Maria Friedman's shoes. Uh, and also my friend, who I worked with on uh, Robbie Sherman's Lovebirds, uh, who's just extraordinary, and that's Greg Castiglione, if I pronounce his name correctly, um, who's playing Count Fosco without any um, prosthetics um, and no rodents, um, but a little bit of a reveal at the uh, end of one of his scenes. Um, so I'll let you see it to, this, to learn what that is. 
uh, a little bit um, further south, across the river, um, at the Minier Chocolate Factory, uh, is another um, revival of um, uh, some, a, a musical with Michael Crawford, in fact. Um, so uh, this is the Minier Chocolate Factory's revival of Barnum, about uh, P.T. Barnum and the, found, uh, the story of this extraordinary uh, founder of um, uh, Barnum and Bailey Circus. Um, and uh, uh, in this um, production, uh, taking on the role of Barnum, which uh, Michael Crawford played uh, to great acclaim at the London Palladium and was filmed, and uh, I know many of my British friends uh, grew up on watching that film, uh, is uh, the comedian Marcus Brigstock. Um, Marcus Brigstock is, um, uh, you know, he maybe maybe the, stro the role is a little bit of a stretch for him. He's very, very genial, um, really, um, you know, you, you're rooting for him all along. But he, um, uh, poor thing, particularly on press night and I believe on other nights, he struggled um, with the act one closer in which he needs to um, walk a tightrope across the auditorium. Um, uh, but you really cheer him on even as he falls off uh, on the night that I attended, I think, three times um uh but uh, he milks it and he comes back on and gives it his all gives it his all there's some also really nice performances in uh supporting roles female roles uh laura pitt pulford as his wife charity um and celinda sean necker as uh, jenny lent his opera singing singer lover at one point um, the real uh, thing to recommend this production is the transformation of the Mini A Chocolate Factory itself uh, into um, this circus. Uh, um uh, into a circus um, and you're in a ring in the auditorium. Um, also look out for the mermaid uh, at the egress as you head towards the egress. Uh, I should also say this has really got me in the mood to see um, the big screen uh, version of Barnum's Story um, which is called uh, The Greatest Showman and it's out this Christmas with Hugh Jackman uh, playing the circus maker which should be pretty awesome. Uh, and as a personal note as somebody who grew up in the States and went to the um, uh, Barnum and Bailey Circus um, um, several times as a child. It seems really sad to me, both of these things coming in the wake of the the, um, the circus, in fact, closing. This American institution closed uh, earlier this year in May after 150 years. So it's a real loss. And uh, seeing this story reminds me just how much of a loss that is. Uh, so those are the uh, four Off West End musicals I wanted to draw your attention to, um, all with limited runs, so uh, check those out. I also wanted to just quickly note a couple of uh, things in town. One that I saw this week I loved, and it's, it is pretty much sold out. Uh, its first four performances sold out almost immediately. They've added an extra one on the 10th of January, a late night performance at the Arts Theatre. And that is uh, Six, um, which I have uh, vlogged about separately, but um, it's really great fun. And it basically it's, it turns into a pop concert, uh, the stories of the six wives of Henry VIII. Uh, so check that out and look out. Uh, indeed for it to go somewhere beyond the arts theater because it has cult hit written all over it. And finally, I, one that I also intend to uh, write about separately, um, but I wanted to flag up uh, before the year was out, is everybody's talking about Jamie. Um, I'm so pleased that this show has transferred, it's got to be one of the fastest transfers for a major production, uh, major musical production. Um, it only premiered, had its world premiere in February um, at, at uh, Sheffield uh, and has now come into Shaftesbury Avenue. And um, John McRae, who plays uh, the teen um, uh, drag queen, Jamie, based on a real story, uh, is absolutely wonderful. So again, there's some amazing performances from some of the um, other uh, females in the cast, um, including uh, Josie Walker, whose mother, who has a really, um, really stunning rendition of My Boy, which is uh, worth the ticket price alone just to see her perform that. Uh, so check them all out. Um, but I should say uh, on my my site my theater mates uh, you can also get lots of proper reviews um, from many of my mates bloggers um, and on my site stage phase you'll find um, uh, details for all of these shows uh, all of the musicals um, and social media for the shows themselves as well as all of the performers in them so check those out too thanks <laughs>